Okay, we are live. I'm Joe Terosian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning. And uh, I know what you're thinking. You're looking behind me because I've moved things around in my office, which is called the Ram Cave. And uh, you're looking and you're thinking, man, that looks crooked behind you. Well, it is slightly on a slant because the Ram Cave used to be my garage. And now um, I have this nice 20 by 20 office that I've used for about 10 years now called the Ram Cave. And so it is kind of on a slightly downward slope. There's nothing I can do to fix it, you know. Oh, there it is. Is that better? You know, so, uh, so no. So there is that slight thing there. But thank you so much for those that are clicking on. I just do this in the morning uh, because I just want to pray for our young people. That's the most important thing. That was the motivation. Uh, not, nothing profound or anything. Uh, I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 4 and 5. If you're out there, say hi. I'd love to say hi back. Uh, and then just give a little update on some things going on, and, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, you know, one of the things my friend Shay Stewart, who is the Granite Ridge on-site director, and you can tell uh, right now, uh, he, uh, he always told me, he says, you pastors, he says, you pastors always try to outpray each other. And it led to us kind of, well, I think I created it, called the Stewart Maxim. And what the Stewart Maxim is, is I'm going to pray better than you. I'm going to feel things more than you. I'm going to be more emotional than you. I'm going to show that I care more than you. And, and we see that, that afflicts a lot of things. And, um, and, and, and it really kind of a little bit plays into, into what, uh, what um, I'm talking about a little bit today in first Corinthians two verses four and five, and it does apply to our young people, but this is the apostle Paul to the church in Corinth. And uh, he is uh, he is writing the note there, and it picks up right there in the fourth verse. It says, My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. I mean, that's just awesome, right? My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. Again, 1 Corinthians 2, 4, uh, and verses 4 and 5. And this is where we inflict misery in the church. We read this scripture, and, and it's so counterintuitive because in the church, we're always going to do something, right? We're going to do something. We're going to come up with a new plan, right? We're going to thrust to the cities. We're going to have urban renewal. We're going to have social justice. We're going to do all these things. Instead of just focusing on the truth we already know and the obedience it requires, we kind of put those things off to the side and we decide we're going to do some big thing. We decide that we're going to out God God. And that is the Stuart Maxim to the hilt, right? And the intention of these morning connections for, for me and, and my congregation on at Burbank Faith Brick and Mortar and, and Burbank, Burbank Faith Virtual is to let the spirit uh, provoke uh, and let the spirit be provoked to more authority in our lives because it does dwell in us, right? The spirit dwells in us. We are fit for sacred space. Our hearts are, are, we are God's temple. He abides within us, but we don't give him full control because we have still free will. But the intent is, is to, is to give the spirit, to provoke the spirit in our lives, to have more authority, right? And this would allow us to be able to see and sense the spiritual battle taking place all around us. And we realize it's just not some soul soothing quick fixes, but obedience, right? focusing on the truth of God's word. And uh, we want to be able to see the spiritual battle, especially when we consider our young people. And uh, and that's who we pray for every day as I try to keep this thing under 10 minutes. Uh, and the explanation for this, because you've heard me pray all week. And I, I've prayed this in my private prayer. In, and I think I've prayed it in church. Uh, but the explanation is, I pray, I do, folks. I pray every day for the destruction of, not the appeasement, but for the destruction uh, of the forces, the spiritual forces and the demonic aligned against God. And if they're aligned against God, they're aligned against us who are created in his image in the heavenly realms, right? We don't make peace with these creatures. We don't make peace with these uh, spiritual beings. No, if they are at war with God, 
they are at war with his image, which is us. So because of what they do, you're going to think, well, Pastor Joe, you're going off the rails here. No, I'm not. Because of what they do, I hate them and I want them destroyed. I do. I hate them. In the, in the scripture, it says in Romans, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, right? And uh, <clears throat> we need to understand the damage they're doing, uh, ruining, uh, diminishing the image of God. Uh, destroying those who God created. Uh, and uh, we need to see that. And who's most like the kingdom are young people, our, our children. And then as they get older, our teens and others, they are the most like the kingdom. And we need to guard them. We need to protect them. We need to see the spiritual battle that's taking place all around them. You know, we'll pat ourselves on the back because we got Joe, Joe Camel canceled or we stopped vaping. Hey, why don't we talk about purpose and meaning and how God brings it into the lives of us? We understand it kind of when we get older, if we survive the the, the stuff going on, but our kids, again, our young people, our teachers that are young and on campuses and, and suffering from the influences of things around them in the workplaces, uh, our college campuses, even our seminaries, and even our churches, they are under assault every day. Uh, every day for our young people is like hitting the beach spiritually at Normandy. They are under assault and they got to get off that beach. So our responsibility is to pray for them and, and seek God in contending and joining with God in contending with them. Because I want the spiritual destroyed. I want the spiritual enemies destroyed. But those those forces who uh, those 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 forces speak to in our realm, you know, that, that demonic, those spiritual influences, they speak to people in our realm, right? And uh, I do not want those in our realm destroyed, okay? I want those, the evil in the heavenly realms destroyed, but I don't want people who are bearing the image of God destroyed. I want them to see God, and I want them to come to reject those dark influences. And if that means they have to lose their platform, lose their voice, their standing, and be visited with a healthy dose of shame, yeah, shame can be a good thing, I want that to happen because what can follow is reconciliation with the Lord. And that's what I want. I don't want those professors and those 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 people in, in, in Congress and who do such despicable things. Uh, school board, we've seen the despicable. I do not want their 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 destruction. I want them to see God. And that means there needs to be some shame. They need to understand and be exposed to how far they've moved from God. And we need to do it to the best of our ability through prayer and the power of God. We don't need another program. We don't need another um, system set up. We need to be um, obedient to the truth of God and continue that all the way through and allow that to be exposed and truly unleash God's power uh, in this world. And so we need to be activated. We need to pray for our schools. We need to pray for our leaders. But we specifically need to pray for our young people who are under spiritual assault every single day. And that should be the passion of our lives. And so I wanted to get that across. And that, that's the reason I pray the way I pray. Okay, a uh, couple things here. Uh, I got a note from Kathy Coleman yesterday. Her father, Roger, had heart surgery uh, about 10 days ago. Uh, two weeks ago, he's up and walking around and he's doing well. Continue to pray for the Alajaji family in Syria uh, because of the recent earthquake. Uh, Dave Hart, David Davies, as they recover from their eye and knee replacement surgery. Again, praise for Colby Van Dyke, him and his wife Sarah, in regards to his throat cancer. Uh, he still has it, but they're acknowledging the prayers have worked. Uh, and he's back to work a little bit. So so let's be in prayer. Can you pray for him? Uh, Roxy Clark, Vision Paradise. And again, as I shared, the Armenian ministry that we're hoping to start on Sunday mornings, be in prayer for us with that. Also, I, I, I threw it out there. My freezer died yesterday. Well, uh, it's a little more than that. Not just my freezer, but my um, but my, my fridge. I need a new compressor. But the good news is they can fix it. <laughs> And, and this is the last time I'll mention that. Instead of three thousand dollars for a new fridge, it's uh, it's about six hundred bucks for a new compressor. So, uh, whew, we 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 skated by that one. Uh, also, um, 
Interesting thing that's in the news. Keep an eye on it as we're still under the 10 minute mark. I feel like I got a little grace to talk about it. There's there's st stuff popping up in my feed about Asbury College. It's a small college, uh, private Christian college in Kentucky. I think it's Wilmore, Kentucky, and they're Wesleyan. They're Wesleyan Holiness. They're 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 like Nazarenes, and uh, they've talked about that a, a revival broke out yesterday and is still going on uh, there at the college. And I guess they have a history of that going back to the early 1970s, which is awesome. It's great. I'm really happy. If they say there's a revival happening, we want that encouraged because I do believe um, there is going to be a revival because we see the fraud of the world. We see the falseness of this world. And uh, I think God can really do something. But I say that with this one thing. As the church, we have to make sure that whatever quote unquote revival breaks out, that we have to make sure it lines up with what the book says, okay? That's why we have the book, right? That's why we have the scripture. There's nothing we're going to learn in a revival that extends beyond the truth of this book. And so uh, check it out and uh, you'll probably see it pop up a little bit more, but that's exciting. If there's revival happening, awesome. I pray that it's not counterfeit. I pray that it is truly uh, about the scriptures and what the scriptures say, and that would be awesome. Uh, this Sunday, we're going to be in Joshua 8. Keep that in mind. In a few weeks, we're going to be at Teen Winter Camp up at Granite Ridge. And uh, if you've got anybody interested in that, let me know. And uh, continue to pray for the projects around the church. The Steps Projector, which we think we're going to have in in about two weeks, maybe. Uh, and, uh, of course, the roof, it never ends. And finally, um, again, I, I, I share this because more and more people are, are taking advantage of it. Come visit us. Come visit us. If you're not going to church anywhere, come visit us. Spend one Sunday in church because what we do with our messages, our sermonettes, they are not the equivalent of being together for worship. And some people, are, a lot of folks are seeing that. So we're getting once a month, twice a month visitors now. And that's really good. It's healthy. It's good for you. Uh, and I made these pledges. I will not ask you to become a member. I will not ask you to serve on the church board. I will not ask you to take on a special project around the church. And I'll even say, if you don't, if you're, if you're not tithing anywhere, of course you could tithe to us. I want you to tithe to the church you're a part of. But if you're not going to church and you want to tithe to us, great. But I'm not going to ask you for your tithe. I'm going to let the Lord lead you on whether or not you want to tithe or be involved in anything else at the church. We just know it's good for us to be in the house of the Lord together. Hey, that stretches all the way back to Psalms. Anyway, God bless. Let's pray. And then uh, I'll let you guys go. Lord, we do thank you for today, God. We thank you for loving us. And Lord, we pray for our young people, God. We pray for them as they hit the campuses today, Lord, and those young teachers that are, those teachers that are on campus, not just young ones, that there is a, a different influence that's in our world today, God. And uh, Lord, we pray for them. We pray for all of our campuses, God. We pray for spiritual protection, Lord. We pray for the eyes of our young people, or even our children, God, as well as our teachers, our, our leaders in the community, police officers, all of them, to have their eyes opened to see that there's a spiritual battle taking place around them. And uh, Lord, give them that vision to know that they're not alone, that there's more with them than that are against them, and that the one who's with them is the creator of all things. Lord, uh, it's not by words, it's not by our deeds, but it's by your presence, God. And, and let us just acknowledge that. Lord, uh, we thank you for the, the praises that are happening in our church. We thank you for the victories that are happening. And we pray for the continued recovery of those souls that uh, just need a physical touch, Lord. And we continue to pray for Colby. We continue to pray for uh, for Roger. Uh, uh, and we continue to pray uh, for Roxy. And uh, we ask for Dave and David Davies. Dave Hart and David Davies uh, continued healing from eye and knee replacement surgery. Lord, give us a blessed week. Bring us together on Sunday in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I'm going to try to be here on, um, what time is it? Oh, later on today with the sermonette. God bless. Take care. And we'll leave a comment. If you see it, leave a like. Talk to you soon. Bye.